Hey there, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week here. Uh, today, I wanted to come with to you and I wanted to share with you some important nutritional information that could very well help a vast majority of you guys out there. I want to talk to you about the five foods that you will want to try and avoid if you are trying to help fight inflammation, help try to manage um, different various disease or other things, and also um, just foods that you want to get out of your body so it can start to heal. And so first up, my name, hey there Sharon, thanks for jumping on. My name is Shelly Levi and I have been in the health and fitness industry, I'm going on like 21 years now. I'm getting crazy old. But um, the thing that stands out the most, you know, it's like most people think health and fitness, big deal, you know. Um, but the part that stands out the most is in 2008, I was diagnosed with celiac disease and it's gone on to accumulate to other autoimmune diseases as well. And so it's not just one that I'm battling, I'm battling four autoimmune diseases. And so much of that has to do, how I manage these diseases has to do with my nutrition and what I'm putting in my body because a lot of your health issues revolve around excess inflammation in the body. So if we can get that out of there, then hopefully you will start to see a big difference and start to feel better, all right? So in my experience of dealing with autoimmune for about the past nine years now, I've learned a lot about the food. And there seems to be five foods that stand out the most that tend to be the most problematic. So I'm gonna start off first. Number one, you're gonna want to avoid dairy. And I know this is gonna be a huge challenge for so many of you, and you're probably wondering, why dairy? Well, first of all, a lot of the dairy problematic with the dairy is what they're feeding the cows, you know, because essentially that's going into your body. And, um, and at least for at least celiac disease, a lot of the damage that's been done to the body is the villi has been destroyed that allows you to digest the dairy. And once that destroy, is destroyed, you can't get it back. So it becomes very, very problematic and very difficult to even begin to attempt to break down the dairy in the body. And when it can't be broken down, the result is inflammation. And then you've got other things that start to flare up. So for most people, avoiding that dairy can be a huge um, way to be able to pull that out of the body and you, again, you start to feel better. Number two thing that you want to avoid is grains. And I'm talking all grains here, all grains. That includes rice, that includes quinoa, that includes your wheat, barley, rye, oats, um, it includes your corn, um, all your grains. And you're probably thinking, well, again, why should I be avoiding this? Well, again, what's problematic is this, is a lot of the grains in the United States are genetically modified. They're genetically modified. And what's being put into some of these grains that's being planted in our soil is destroying, again, our digestive linings, our digestive lining in our body and it starts to cause leaky gut. And when leaky gut occurs, then again, there's things that are rolling over into the system that shouldn't be getting through, and it becomes very toxic and inflammatory in the body. So getting rid of grains, or at the very minimal, um, choosing organic versions of grains. Choosing organic versions of grains if you're going to consume them. Again, for the person who is celiac, you can't be doing gluten at all. And the other piece to that is when other grains enter the body, the body has a difficult time being able to decipher the grains, the gluten proteins that are in the wheat, barley, and rye from those that are in, say, like your rice and quinoa. It can't tell the difference. And, when, and so when it enters the body, it's like, okay, you look like gluten, you act like gluten, you must be gluten, so I'm going to attack you. 
And when it attacks, I'm talking, it's killing your good cells in your body. And again, the inflammation will occur. So for a lot of people out there that especially that are already diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, you're probably best to be gluten-free for sure and then maybe even taking it a step farther and going grain-free. The third one that you want to avoid is soy. Hey there, Rita. Thanks for jumping on. Soy. Again, why do you need to avoid soy? 95% of the soy in this country is genetically modified. We just talked about that. Genetically modified foods destroy the gut lining, which is where 70% of your immune system is. And then when that's destroyed, you start to get this leaky gut. All of a sudden, now you're sick. And soy, like I said, 95% of the soy in this country is genetically modified. If you're gonna do soy, make sure it's organic. However, I'm gonna throw this word of caution out there to you. Soy is one of the biggest problems for thyroid disease. The thyroid and soy do not get along at all. And soy, when the thyroid goes, you're gonna see a lot of other things go. Speak, speaking from experience here, 25 years going on thyroid disease. It is not a fun disease at all to live. I would rather live with my celiac than the thyroid disease, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so soy, it just, for some reason, they don't get along. And when the thyroid gets broken down, it just, it, it regulates so many things in the body. And so you don't even want to go there. So to me, avoid that soy at all possible. The next up, number four, beans and lentils. And for some of you vegetarians or vegans, you're probably going to go off on me on this one. But before you go off on me on this one, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. For the vast majority of the population, beans and lentils, again, are very inflammatory in the body. I mean, seriously, think about it. How many of you guys can, dig uh, can go ahead and eat beans and not experience something digesting, bloating, um, gas, pain, all that after eating them? There's a lot of us who just cannot eat the beans and lentils. And the beans and lentils, they have an outer texture to them that actually can be quite toxic in the digestive system. However, you can get around this. I believe I listened to a podcast that said that if you pressure cook um, the beans and lentils for, a oh gosh, I can't remember the amount of time, but if you pressure cook them, it will help the, remove that toxin from that outer lining of the beans and lentils to make it easier to, to digest. However, again, most the vast majority of people just do not do well with them, and it actually causes inflammation in the digestive system when it's trying to break it down and digest it. The last one, and I'm sure most of you already know what this is, number five, added sugars. That's right, added sugars. There is nothing good that comes from added sugars, seriously. Um, it, it's just one problem after the other, one problem after the other. The body just does not do well with sugar. It has a very difficult time functioning properly. And when the body doesn't function properly, again, your health issues set in and you feel like crap day in and day out. But sugar is extremely addicting. It's as addictive as cocaine. They've done studies on this on the brain. So it's difficult to be able to break yourself um, from it, but it can be done. It can be done. Stick to your natural sugars, natural sugars found in fruit, found in your vegetable, honey. Go to your farmer's market and grab some local honey from the area. Um, maple syrup, what, you know, 100% organic maple syrup. That's natural. Those are natural forms of sweeteners that you can add to your baking or to your cooking if you're wanting to sweeten things. Those are the sugars the body knows how to break down and be able to utilize a little bit better than these added sugars that are being put in processed foods. So those are your five right there. You've got your dairy, 
your grains, specifically gluten, then you've got soy, beans and lentils, and then your added sugars. Five foods that you can take out of your diet right now to help start combating that inflammation, now starting to help your body, being able to manage some of the diseases that you're dealing with, and then hopefully you'll start to feel better as things start to heal once you get that inflammation cleared out of there. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but those five ingredients that I just lit, um, kind of rattled off here, those are all a part of going following a paleo diet. So if you're following a paleo diet, those things, those five things I just listed are not in that paleo diet. That's right. I've got people right now that are in my little black dress project. And in this first week after we've cut those five things out of their diet and they've followed basically this paleo plan, we've seen anyone lose anywhere from two to five pounds in just one week. And they're already starting, even though the first two to three days suck, like literally suck, because your body's going through a detox more or less. Um, but like by the weekend, they were starting to feel better. They're starting to sleep better. They're starting to um, report increase in energy. You know, so these are some of the benefits that can come along with pulling those things out of your diet. So I hope this has helped you. Hey, Julie, thanks for jumping on. I hope that this information has helped you, especially if you're a person who already deals with autoimmune diseases. I'm with you guys. I feel you. I know what it's like to live the life of autoimmune disease. I've been doing it for many, many years now, and it's, it's not fun. It's not fun. And if there's, I've tried to learn as much as I can to better manage it. And you know what? It's not easy. It's not easy to make these changes. Do I still have some grains here and there? Heck yeah. I had corn chips the other day with guacamole and I paid for it. I paid for it. So, but you know, it's, it's a part of the process as you're making some of these changes. You know, you're gonna get to the point where I think when you're gonna find with some of these health issues and these diseases that are popping up in your life, that you're gonna get so sick and tired of being sick and tired that you're gonna go back to this video here and you're gonna start pulling some of these out so you can feel better. Now, if you know of someone who suffers from health issues, autoimmune disease, please pass this on to them or tag them in the comments below you never know how much this could help them out. Every little bit helps, all right? Thank you so much for jumping on tonight. I appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time to jump on, to comment, and like I said, please share this with people. If you know that they're suffering, um, you never know who you might be helping by just sharing this little bit of information. You guys have a great night here, thanks.